Um, I, too, want to acknowledge that I'm, I'm really pleased that Chairman Landrieu has focused in her first hearing on such an important issue. Our nation's clean burning and job creating natural gas should and can play an important role in strengthening global security. The ongoing crisis in Ukraine, which we're discussing here today and, of course, around the world, and Russia's threat to use its natural gas exports as a weapon shows why we need to responsibly develop our own natural gas reserves and expand our capacity to export this resource abroad. I do share the frustration of uh, many of my colleagues, like Senator Barrasso, that the Department of Energy has moved uh, slowly. I could put it another way, has not moved more quickly to approve exports to non-FTA countries. And that's why I introduced a bill just a few weeks ago that would end the current logjam at the Department of Energy by deeming export to all WTO, WTO countries to be in the public interest, in effect, uh, proving the pending application queue. Uh, this bill is bipartisan and bicameral. In fact, shortly after introducing my legislation, my home state colleague, Representative Gardner, presented a virtually identical measure in the House, which will be marked up soon, and I welcome him in joining me uh, in this effort. Uh, I've made this point publicly and with the Secretary numerous times over the last few weeks. The crisis in Ukraine has refocused on how U.S. natural gas exports can stabilize global security. And, and that's why I also will file my bill uh, for, that would allow immediate DOE approval for the WTO countries uh, as an amendment to the pending Ukraine sanctions bill. Uh, I do think the uh, Department of Energy is finally heeding uh, the calls uh, that I've put forth and others have put forth to approve additional LNG permits. And as Senator Wyden mentioned yesterday, the Department uh, approved a permit for the Jordan Co. facility, something that I've been pushing for and a real signal that we've made a difference in demanding action. Uh, I'd like to thank the Department and Secretary Moniz for putting additional emphasis on global energy security and the importance of our allies as a part of their rationale uh, for approval. So in sum, I'm hopeful that this refocused emphasis on, in, on the energy security of energy exports will lead to even more movement from the Department of Energy in the coming weeks and months. After all, there are still 24 permits uh, pending. Uh, with that, let me turn to the witnesses, and I want to direct this question to the panel. Uh, much of the focus of LNG exports has been of the DOE's review of applications. But isn't it true uh, that even with DOE approval, the volume of natural gas to be exported is dependent on many other economic and financial considerations, as well as FERC approval for environmental and other considerations? Would it be fair to say that the DOE approval simply gives the green light for a market-driven process? I would welcome a comment from any, any of you on the panel. Mr. Chow, you, uh, you've, you, you've, I think, shed some important light on uh, some of the broader dynamics at play, and maybe we'll start with you. Uh, as, uh, Senator, thank you for your question. Uh, as I said in my testimony, there are lots of good reasons uh, why we should proceed with uh, serious consideration and maybe speeding up the process uh, for licensing of, of uh, crude exports as well as more LNG uh, uh, facilities. Uh, I, I think one point that I would make is that not only does it send a signal uh, to the market, but the fact of the matter is that sweet spot that Senator Wyden mentioned grows as the resource-based estimates grow, as our ability to recover more from uh, gas from the shale grows. So I, I imagine that it also sends uh, a message to the market uh, that the Department of Energy's confidence that we have sufficient resource to both entertain uh, exports as well as meet domestic demand. Mm -hmm. Mr. Goldwyn. I would say the answer to your question is yes, really. The DOE uh, license is really just a license to market. Um, it just says that you are able to go to customers who you don't have free trade agreements with and say that you can sell gas to them. It's not an indication that you've made environmental clearance that comes from FERC. Uh, it's not an indication that, um, uh, that you um, have got community assent to build a project where you want, and it doesn't mean you've got financing. Um, and I think um, that's probably the challenge of the process right now is people score these DOE approvals like they're real projects, but they're not. All you need for the DOE approval is a letter and a stamp. You know, if you get FERC approval, you've got to have, you know, millions of dollars of environmental assessment, and you have to have credible financing. And if I could, uh, actually, I've, I've written a, a, an alternative proposal uh, at Brookings, if I could enter for the record, called a modest proposal for improving the Department of Energy non-FTA LNG export application process. But essentially, if you, if you just let projects which had cleared FERC and had a formal FERC application go to the head of the line, then you would be accelerating projects which are not just licenses to market. 
but projects which have are ready and are commercially mature. And I think that would solve a lot of this confusion about whether or not we're really going to have 18 BCF a day in projects we're not going to by just getting the DOE to give its approval to projects that are ready to be built. Mr. Szymanski, let me, let me turn to you for a follow-on question. <clears throat> the seasonality of natural gas prices, uh, LNG exports might be able to stabilize uh, these flux, uh, fluctuations for consumers and producers, of course, in my home state of Colorado and across the nation. You see a surge in the winter. Uh, would exports create an opportunity to maintain production levels during seasons of high demand? It, it's certainly possible. The availability of the storage that's associated with LNG export facilities uh, might, some of that gas might be available domestically uh, if uh, prices got higher in the domestic markets than what the gas could get in the um, global markets. Uh, that uh, uh, could have been uh, a, a useful thing, for example, uh, if there had been some way to get LNG quickly into uh, Boston during the uh, polar vortex. Uh, Senator, back to your earlier question. Uh, EIA uh, believes that there are lots of factors that uh, enter into the LNG export uh, calculation, including what oil prices are in the global markets, uh, how quickly oil and gas prices um, uh, converge, what the pace of growth in supply and demand is outside. And so, uh, yes, they, uh, I would also agree that, um, that there are many factors, uh, both uh, in the energy markets and in the financial markets, that would uh, come into play in determining whether an LNG export facility actually got built and used. Thank you for that, Madam Chair. Thank you. Let's find the sweet spot. That's yeah. Be the Thank you very much.